Hey there, everybody. It's Kelly Pilardo here with the Grit, Guts, and Courage show. And this is the show where we talk to people who have had a challenge in their life and somehow they overcame it. And so today is a very special guest and very special friend of mine, Brad Walsh. And so I'm really excited to have Brad here with us today because I don't know what he's going to talk about. So, <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Brad. Thank you so much, Kelly, for this incredible opportunity to be here with you today to share and just to be part of your platform and be in your energy. I appreciate you and your friendship, your beautiful soul. So thank you so much for bringing me on and for having me here to share a little bit. I appreciate you. You are very, very welcome. I know um, when I was on your podcast, we just had such a great time. Oh, it was amazing. <laughs> and you had me, you know, you were drawing everything out of me. <laughs> Like, oh my gosh, where did this guy come from? <laughs> <laughs> it was it was an incredibly beautiful, powerful, and inspirational conversation. Yes, Kelly, your story is just so powerful and so beautiful. And you're an inspirational human being, woman, and soul. So it was an absolute pleasure having you on the show. And yeah, it was just an amazing conversation all around. Every minute of it, I loved it. Oh, uh, I did too. And and you're such a beautiful soul too. And I thank you. Love the work that you do. And how you are just so all about empowering people. And I love that Thank about you. you. So Thank you very I'm, much. I was just so happy that you're in my world and happy when you said you wanted to come and chat with, with us. Oh, it is my honor to be here, Kelly. So thank you. Great. Okay. So Brad, we're just going to jump right in. What's yep. the story of grit, guts, and courage that you want to share with everybody? Oh, man. Story of grit, guts, and courage. I would say the whole entrepreneurial journey. I mean, leaving for me, I was, I worked in corporate for 12 and a half years as an audiovisual technician at an accounting firm. And so there was all the comforts of having that safe, that safety net, that, that safe place. I had my steady paycheck every two weeks and I had the benefits and all of the things. And, you know, I think for the first six, six and a half years, I was really happy. I loved my job. It was great. I loved going into work. And then I don't know, something just a switch flipped and I was just, I could not stand going. I hated my job. I did not like my boss. We did not get along and it was just constant bullshit. I got on a, I got put on a performance improvement program at work because of my attitude. And <laughs> I was hey, just, I, I was miserable. Of mine. <laughs> What's that? I got fired because of mine. <laughs> So we're we're in we're in good company here. Yes, Kelly. we are. I can relate. <laughs> yeah, it was. I was just miserable. I did not like going in, and I can remember sitting at my desk, and all I kept thinking about was not being there and and jumping into my photography business full time. Because during that time, I was running my business part time, and that's all I could think about was photography and leaving this corporate job behind and. But it took me six years more of being stuck in that shitty place of, and I talk about this quite a bit myself as an entrepreneur now, that it's it's kind of sad when you think about all the people who get stuck in those jobs where they don't want to be there. It's very evident. And they're they're it's almost like they're pissing away those five days a week because they're wishing them away for they're living for the weekend. And it's a horrible place to be in. And all of a lot of us, anyways, entrepreneurs who were in corporate or in a job that we hated have all been through that. Right. Mm -hmm. So every a lot of people can relate to that mindset and that story, but it took a lot of inner strength, courage. I mean, I can remember when we when I my wife and I talked about me leaving corporate. It was about a year before I actually did it. We started talking about it. And I can remember about for the for three or the last three or four months before I gave my notice. It's like, oh my God, I'm really gonna do this. Can I do this? How am I gonna do this? And like just the inner battle of should I be doing this? And then conversations with people saying, well, really, you're leaving your you're leaving your corporate job to start a photography, but there's so many photographers out there. What are you thinking? Like all the competition and just so all that external noise plus my internal noise that I was dealing with. Yeah. It's like oh, I was I just felt like I was being drowned out inside and out. And so for that three or four months leading up to when I gave my notice, I can remember going in 
because I would take the subway into work because I work downtown in Toronto yeah. and I live up in North York and my stomach was in knots every day going to work just thinking about holy shit how am I going to do this like am I really going to do this? Am I really going to give my notice and leave the safety of my corporate job to jump into the unknown? Like, I mean, I don't have any clients lined up and I don't have any money banked to fall back on if things. So it's just that constant inner battle. And then the last week leading up to it, it's like, okay, well, I got it. And I, it's so funny because there were times where, okay, I'm ready to give it. And then something would come up where I wouldn't do it something came up to stop me from doing it or something happened that I couldn't do it that week. My boss was away for one of those weeks. I remember Um, just little things would pop up. And then I finally got the courage to walk into his office and uh, sit down with him. And I had my resignation letter with me and I handed it to him. And I said, this is, you know, I've I've got to move on. It's time for me. I'm not happy here. He says, I know. He said, I know you're not happy here. And I knew this was coming at some point. So you do what you got to do for you. And it is what it is. So it ended up being a lot less. um, I don't know what the word is. Um, it, It wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be actually having to tell my boss and then telling my friends at work and because because I worked as an audiovisual tech, I, I knew a lot of people in the firm. So because I was dealing with executive uh, or admin assistants right up to CEO. So I knew a lot of people in the firm. So then it's a matter of telling people, okay, I'm leaving. This is where I'm going and all of these things. And the reception was actually quite warm and for the most part, pretty positive. It was very supportive. Um, but it, it was a tough, really tough thing to tough hurdle to jump over and finally do that and hand in my resignation letter. And, you know, I gave them, I think it was probably about a month's notice because I'd been there so long and I was friends with a lot of people at the firm. And I just figured, you know, I'll do my best to help them out and support them in any way I can leading up to. And what was really surprising, what ended up working out quite well was because as part of my job at the firm, about three or four years into my my 12 and a half years there, I was taken on or I was tasked with the responsibility of doing the headshots for the corporate staff. So that just became part of my job. And when I handed in my notice and I left, my boss and I talked, he said, we'll bring you back as the headshot photographer. We'll give you a little boost so you can get some business. So I, I got probably three or four, five months of business out of the firm when I actually left. So I had a little bit of a cushion there because they brought me back in because of course I had, I had created the relationships. I had been at the firm for 12 and a half years. So they knew me. And so it worked out quite well. It ended up working out very, very well, more better than I expected because I had that cushion of that money by coming back in and doing the headshots as an external photographer. So it worked out really well. I mean, it, it took a lot of, inner strength and courage to make the jump but you know and even after the the contract ended with the firm and I was I was trying to to get my business going and get more business and things like that it was still an internal struggle because I was out on my own now I only had me to rely on and in terms of getting work so I dealt with a lot of competition mindset and all of these other imposter syndrome and all these other things started creeping in after that contract ended. So it took me about probably two years into my entrepreneurial journey before I was able to jump over those hurdles or turn the volume down a little bit more. And again, that's not to say that these things don't still creep in from time to time. Of course they do. We're human beings and this is part of the entrepreneurial journey, but I was able to quiet the noise, turn the volume down a little bit so that it didn't affect me as much. And so, but that took me two years into my entrepreneurial journey to learn how to dial back the volume. So that, I mean, that's probably one of the most courageous and brave things I've ever done in my life was, was leaving that, that comfort of a full-time corporate job into entrepreneurship. Yeah. I totally get it because, you know, I was put in a very similar situation and uh, I think, Brad, I think you know my story. I, I'm, mm-hmm. I think 
it on yours. Yeah. Or, you know, my boss had given me an ultimatum and she basically said, are you going to be excited to come to work on Monday or relieved if you don't have to? Yeah. When I had my very worst performance review ever. <laughs> and, um, and that's what she said. And, you know, I still remember going home and saying, you know, to myself, um, you know, are you going to be excited to come to work or relieved if you don't have to? And I knew, yeah. I knew the answer because I wanted to be a speaker full time. Yeah. But I just left my marriage five months before that 24 year marriage. And I'm like, now I'm living in my aunt's basement. And now, and now I'm being told or asked to give up my job because, mm -hmm. you know, she knew that I wasn't happy. I was already yeah. speaking. I had my first book out. I was going on to my second book <clears throat> and she was right. And I, I just feel like she was that mother bird that was kicking me out of the nest. <laughs> yeah. Giving you, know, you a little nudge. Kicking the, yep. kicking the baby bird out, like, go, go fly, go be yeah. who you're supposed to be. And she knew, she knew who that you, that you, of course, that you weren't happy, but she knew that you're meant for more. So she had to give you that little nudge, right? Exactly. That's the key thing. You're meant for more. And your boss probably saw the same thing in you where you're meant for more. If you're not happy, why would you stay in a dead end toxic job because it's not yeah. making you feel good it's making no. you feel like crap so mm -hmm. you know why why stay there so I, I was miserable and I can tell you that that next day after my last day of work is like I woke up and first of all it was like a huge weight had been lifted off my shoulders and then the next thought was holy fuck i'm i'm an entrepreneur now <laughs> like <laughs> i gotta what make the... work <laughs> <laughs> yeah i gotta start making shit happen it, it, it's an incredible feeling it really is yeah and and you know and i remember that holy shit moment too <laughs> and but then i also said to myself hold it you're spending 40 hours a week in a job you hate it yeah and you were in your office crying what if you could spend 40 hours a week monitor, um, marketing yourself, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You're not going to yep. fail if you're able to spend 40 hours a week marketing yourself instead of being in an office where you hate what you're doing. So to me, that was like, oh yeah, okay. Well, this all depends on me now. So yeah, then that's it. Everything's on you. And you, if you don't put in the work, you're not going to get any money. So it comes down to like feast or famine. You better get your ass in gear and start doing shit, yeah. making shit happen so that you can start making money in your yeah, business. Absolutely. And it, it's a journey. I mean, entrepreneurship is not for everybody. It, it's a tough road. It is not easy. It can be very lonely at times, but I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. Even, even in those moments where it's like, what? Because I had those moments in the first couple. What the fuck did I do? Like, what am I thinking? Did I make the right decision? And then, like I said, dealing with the imposter syndrome and all of those other things, but I wouldn't trade it for anything. Even in those moments, it's still one of the most incredible things to, to do. And it will stretch you. It will test you in ways you never even, it'll stretch muscles you never even knew you had. It, it It's the biggest test, one of the biggest tests in life for sure. Yeah. And, and, you know, and I can understand too, feeling that whole imposter syndrome and then the comparison syndrome. Yeah. Right? Because yeah. there's millions of photographers out there. Yeah. Right? Exactly. So how do you not compare yourself to all the other photographers, right? And you have to make yourself stand out. And Yeah. Well, it was tough. It was a tough battle. But when I finally was able to quiet that noise or turn the volume down, it was a matter of realizing and coming to the realization that you know what? Fuck the competition. They're, the only competition I have is me. As long as I can look back on my work and my journey as a photographer and see that I've improved along the way, that's the only competition I have. No one else has my eye. No one else, no other photographer sees things the way I do. If you gave three of us, three different photographers, one, the same thing to shoot, yeah. guarantee all three images would look different. No one else sees things the way I do. No one else deals with clients the way I do. No one is me. I am unique. We are all unique. So that's where you have to step into that mindset and realize that you can do this. No one else is you. No one's going to provide the service that you provide or see things, whatever business it is you're in, no one else is you. 
So if this is something you want to do, just fucking do it. Don't <laughs> wait. There is no perfect time to do it. As I learned, there is no, per you just got to, you have to have the faith. You have to be willing to be committed and do the work, but just fucking do it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You just got to do it. I know. Yeah. I know that's how I felt too, when I had to make that leap and uh, you just it's do it. It's scary as shit, but oh, it, it is, is so worth it. Yeah, it is. So, okay. So you've got a young man, he comes and he's, he's sitting in front of you and he says, bad, mm -hmm. I hate my job. Absolutely hate it. But I've got all these bills to pay and I want to be a photographer. Mm -hmm. What should I do? What would you tell them? Got all these bills to pay. <laughs> Part, you know, I would say first, I would ask him if he's willing to put in the work. Is he, is he going to be committed? Are you going to be committed to this? Are you willing to put in the work? Are you willing to hire a mentor? I hired a mentor as a photographer to help me. Are you willing to hire a mentor? Are you willing to put in the work? Um, I might even say, you know what, why don't you do the photography part-time for a little bit till you get a bit of money to pay your bills at least. Cause you don't want to leave. You, the last thing you want to do is have yourself out on the street or not be able to pay your bills. Right. So I would say work a little bit longer possibly and get some money saved to pay your bills. But in the meantime, build your clientele list, get some money coming in, start charging for jobs that you're shooting part-time on a part-time basis. Right. And, or see if you can even dial back your hours at work so that right. you're not, so that you can dedicate a little bit more time to your business, but don't give up on that dream. Do it. Definitely, definitely take the leap. Yeah. Just be smart about it. I love that. Yeah. And never give up on the dream. No, right. no. Never if that's really up. something you want to do, you're the only one that's going to make it happen. No one else is going to do it for you, but don't mm -hmm. let the external noise I, I think that if you can get past the external or sorry, if you can get past the internal noise that you're dealing with, if you can turn that volume down, the external noise is nothing. That's, that's a walk in the park. Focus on turning down this and then the other stuff that's, that's easy. Yeah. I totally um, agree with that. I mean, nobody, when I was becoming a speaker, nobody was telling me I was a bad speaker. Yeah. It was myself that was saying, <laughs> am I really good enough? Right. Yeah. Nobody was yeah. saying I was bad. Right. It was that's usually fact, what it is, right? Yeah. They, in fact, they were telling me I was a great speaker, but yet it was my voice that was telling me, I don't think I'm good enough. Our voices are usually the loudest. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, okay. So, Brad, how did you get through it? When those voices were telling you you weren't good enough or you weren't smart enough or you weren't, you know, weren't going to be able to do it, what, what were you doing to get over that? It was a struggle. It it, it just took perseverance. And like I said, I hired a mentor to help me. Um, and I surrounded myself with, with good friends who supported me. A support system and community is absolutely key. You have to have a support system in place. That's the other thing I, I must stress is when you are making the jump into entrepreneur, make sure you have a support system around you that will help lift you up, help cheerlead you. When you get into those moments where you don't feel good enough or can I really do this, have a support system in place. That is absolutely key. So I had that. Yeah, yeah that is so important. You know, I remember yeah. when I was deciding to be a speaker mm -hmm. and um, my ex-husband said to me, well, who's going to listen to you? And so then I had my mentors that were saying, Cal, people will be so inspired by your story. So I had the one one side of me that was saying, you're not good enough. And then yeah. the other side of you saying, Cal, go do it. We'll find a way to help you. <laughs> it's that tug of war. <laughs> yeah. And so you got this internal war going on with you, you know, yeah. and like, who do you listen to? And you've got the people that you love and somehow you have to silence them a little bit. Yes. Yeah, you do sometimes. <laughs> Absolutely. Because your, yep. your mentors are saying something that you don't see. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So. Uh, that's so awesome. Okay. I love that, Brad. So Thank the you. other question that I have for yep. you, what's the gift in it? What's the gift in giving up your corporate job and, and, you know, becoming that entrepreneur? Time freedom. 
oh, is the biggest yeah. gift, I think. It, it allows you the time to work on you because that's the most important thing you have to work on is yourself. And in turn, that will help you grow your business. It will help you establish relationships. I just say time freedom. It just gives you that time to achieve what you want to, what you want to achieve in life. Yeah. And I also find too, being an entrepreneur, I probably work more hours than mm -hmm. when I had my corporate job, but I have, I, I think the way to phrase it is that I have more time flexibility. Yes. Right? Absolutely. So yeah, I might be working on weekends, but then I can take Monday and Tuesday off or whatever. Right? Yeah. But sometimes, I mean, as they say, and I know it's cliche, but when you're doing something you love, it doesn't feel like work. Right. And it doesn't. It really doesn't. Like mm -hmm. I could remember sitting at my computer when I first let, and editing for hours. And it's like, where the fuck did the time go? Like, I can't <laughs> believe it's, it's six hours have passed. And it's just, it, you know, when you're doing something you love, it, it changes the way thing it, it's, it's hard to explain, but it's, it's a beautiful feeling when you're, when you find that thing that makes your heart sing and makes your soul sing. And in addition to that, that thing you're doing impacts and gives back to people. There is no better feeling in the world. Honestly, I swear to you, it's like winning the lottery twice, because first of all, finding that thing that makes your heart sing, finding your passion, your purpose. But when that gives back to people, that's you've hit the lottery twice. There is no better feeling in the world. Yeah. So, you know, Brad, I know you do some incredible work and I would love for you to you. share with everybody. What is the work you do and how can people work with you? Sure. So I am a podcast host and producer of the podcast Empowerography, a platform that was created to elevate and amplify the voices of women through sharing their stories on the podcast. I'm also a boudoir photographer, portrait photographer. Um, and I just love being able to highlight women and show women themselves in a light that they don't normally get to see themselves in. It's a beautiful thing. I I I get the gift of witnessing transform as a photographer of witnessing transformation unfold right before my very eyes. And that is one of the most powerful and beautiful things to witness, to see that happen. And to know that this has shifted this woman's view of herself and shifted her confidence. And mm. it is such an incredible gift that I have been given to, to be able to do this, to be able to provide this. And then of course the podcast to be able to provide this space for women to come in and share their stories. I mean, I am blown away by every single one of these women's stories that I, that I interview. It's an absolute honor for me to be able to be in the same space with these women, to be invited into the space with you. You were a guest and all the women who I've interviewed, it's an honor for me to be invited into that space to share in their stories and their journeys. So, and it's so much bigger than all of us. And I just love that. I love with all of my heart. I know without a shadow of a doubt, this is why I was put here on this earth is to do this work. And yeah. I love it with all of my heart and soul. <laughs> I know you can see the the love and the passion that you have for it. And especially, you know, because I was on your podcast. Um, and someday I would love to get, you know, get you to do some photos and absolutely stuff. I would be honored. And it's weird because me, me being a burn survivor, I always hated my photo being taken. Hated right. it with a passion. Yeah. And you know, people would say how beautiful my picture was, and I would I don't see it, right? Yeah. yeah. I remember yeah. that. And so when I was doing my Still Beautiful book, I wanted some new headshots. And I went to an old uh, scrapbooking friend of mine. Her mm -hmm. and I have a scrapbook for 20 years. I think it's been, <laughs> no, it hasn't been that long. I think it's been like 14 or so. But anyway, yeah. I went to, went to her and um, she said, like the, the pictures she took, it was like, when I, when I saw those pictures, I was like, wow. I finally see how beautiful I am. Yeah. And that's that's the gift that I get to give to women is to show them that their true beauty. It's it's an incredible gift. It really is. As a photographer, it's it's an amazing, beautiful, powerful gift. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. And it was so cool. I just like abs it was the first time and I had tears in my eyes and she had tears in her eyes and I used it for the cover of my still beautiful book. And <laughs> 
And she was just so excited that she was able to create that transformation for me because just like you, you know, people walk in and they just, they don't see their true beauty. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I love that. (laughs) And I know you and I could talk about this topic. (laughs) We could. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So how can people work with you? Um, People can get a hold of me through email at, um, empowerography podcast at gmail.com you can email me there for to be a guest on the podcast to talk about being a guest or even to talk about photography i'm more than happy to uh, discuss if anyone's looking to get a boudoir shoot done or headshots or any type of branding photography and of course to be a guest on the podcast i'm always looking for amazing kick-ass women to interview so that would be the best way. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Empowerography Podcast or at Visuphoria underscore photography. Okay. So Brad, what are some final words of wisdom that you'd love to share with everybody? Don't let anyone dim your light. Shine. We all have a story. We all have a light within us. You need to shine that light out into the world and share your gifts with the world. You were given these gifts, not for you, for the world. So make sure you step into those gifts and share them with the world. The world deserves it. Great. Thank you so much, Brad. I just love your story and <laughs> love your energy. And and uh, can't wait to someday you and I will like, one of us will have to come to the other end of camp. Absolutely. Canada, so <laughs> I would love that. Kelly, thank you so much for this incredible opportunity to sit down and speak with you. It's always a pleasure to sit down and chat with you and Thank you for providing the platform for me to share a little bit about who I am and the work I'm putting out into the world. I appreciate you. You are very welcome. And thank you. I appreciate you. So there you guys go. There's another episode of the Grit, Guts, and Courage. So stay tuned for the next one. Bye, everyone.